Welcome back guys and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. We are out here today on a trout management area in Fairfield County, Connecticut, a county I don't get to all that often, but uh, we are out here in Fairfield County today to see if we can get ourselves some trout. I actually came to this stream several days ago and wasn't filming that day. I just kind of wanted to go out and fish without having to worry about dragging out the camera gear and narrating and all that. Some days it's just kind of annoying to do all that and I just want to go fishing. <laughs> well, I came out here and I caught four tigers in only about two hours, which is crazy. I mean, that was a new personal record for me getting that many tigers in, in such a short amount of time or getting that many tigers in one day. So I figured I would bring the camera back out here this time and see if we can't get ourselves one of these awesome stalker tigers. At least one today. Now we're also gonna be kind of testing something else out here, uh, namely because I caught all the fish, not only the four tigers, but the couple of rainbows and the couple of browns that I caught during that last outing. Got them all on a dry dropper. I plan to throw that again today, and I'm kind of curious to see if I go back through all of these exact same areas that I fished with the dry dropper the other day. I mean, just a handful of days ago. Are these fish gonna hit it just the same? And I'm talking like the exact same rig, which is to say a uh, number 16 Alcaracatus up top and like a number 18 uh, pheasant tail down below. I'm gonna put that right back on and we're gonna see if we can get them to bite that. It should be interesting. But uh, enough of the intro, let's get geared up. And let's get out there. <laughs> All right guys, so I'm rigging up here. Now, a lot of you guys sometimes want to know kind of the more technical aspects of how I set these rigs up. Um, I have a nice um, kinked up butt section of a leader here, and guess what? I'm going to use it. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I uh, have a couple different diameters of tippet. I usually build my leaders out manually by just tie it, tying, you know, progressively um, lower diameter lengths of tippet together. Oh, I see some fish rising over there. Now, I'll tell you right now, one really cool thing that I'm, I'm noticing immediately is that there's way fewer leaves in this water. There were tons and tons of leaves in this water the last time that I was here, and it made this pool particularly hard to fish because the flies were always getting caught on uh, leaves at the surface when I would try to cast. It seems like all those leaves have been flushed out. missed one just missed one I got like uh, I got up there like three feet further than I had gone previously that fish took instantly oh. that one looped over a tree branch oh. Let's see if we get another taker up there all right folks well we had two takes didn't get a positive hook set in either fish just kind of rolled them um, and this is a really good spot. I, I got several fish here when I was here several days ago. Now, why is that? Well, it could be that the fish have moved elsewhere in the stream. Uh, it could be that they've seen these flies before and they know not to hit them. It could be that there's a little bit of a bite window here with it getting as cold as it has overnight. Maybe these fish are kind of, it's going to be another hour or two before they turn on. We're going to test some of those hypotheses, but uh, for now, let's move further upstream. Oh my gosh, that's a decent sized trout in that run right there. I wonder if I can get him to take. It's a decent sized fish. That's a pretty shallow run. I wouldn't have expected many stalkers to be there, but there's definitely one stalker that chose to be there. Problem is, a very difficult approach for this fish. I'm gonna have to get up under this log, bow and arrow cast up into that fast riffle. I hope he takes, and then who knows if I can even land him. Let's find out. Careful approach here. Yep, got one, got one. This is not the fish I saw though. I did get one though. Oh shoot, I wanted the big one. I didn't realize there was another one in this run. But I'll take it, about. 
is a little rainbow, especially today. Took him in. He's a wily little guy. Doesn't want to sit still. That's fine. Just excellent, guys. Excellent. All right, let's let this guy go. All right, guys. Well, first fish to the net. That fish took the nymph uh, up in this run, and that was not the fish that I saw. The fish I saw originally that, that got me down here to fish this run was definitely a larger fish. So that was just another fish in this run that I couldn't even see from uh, up in the bank there. Um, took the nymph in this, I would say, roughly six to seven inch deep run. And uh, first fish of the day, not too bad. Okay, so this pool we're coming up on here, when I was here several days ago, I uh, hooked and netted one fish and I rolled another. I know there was at least a couple fish that we're holding in here. Whether or not they're still here, I don't know. We're about to find out. I'm not gonna lie guys, these fish are kicking my ass today. I've made my way up quite a bit further than I went in this stream last time with, uh, I don't know, like an eighth of the fish that I caught in this stretch last time. My feeling is this is largely a bite window issue and I feel fairly confident, maybe naively so, that uh, if I kind of slowly hike my way right back down where I began, we're going to catch two to three times more fish, at least, than we did on the first um, on the first pass. Now that's a little later in the day, water's warmed up, fish have turned on. But uh, I guess we're gonna test that theory. <laughs> All right, folks, still throwing a dry dropper rig, but I'm running a smaller uh, size 20 rainbow warrior instead of the size 18 pheasant tail. We'll see if that makes a difference. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Time will tell. Eh, only one so far. I think a lot of got cleaned out. It's supposed to be catch and release only. Yeah, it's not a real fish, so, and I'm, I'm sure these fish have been fished to a lot by now, so yeah, they it makes sense to me. Yeah. On the Uzi or the Oh, oh. Got him. Nice. Let's see, it's a tiger. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I saw it twice. Nice to know they're still here. Yes. Yeah, you too. <laughs> so how about that, guys? So uh, if you didn't notice, uh, a, a gentleman walking by, just walking his dog, I think. Uh, happened to see me fly fishing and we were just kind of chit-chatting a little bit and at that exact moment um, that uh, I was talking about where I typically fish I saw a fish come out very carefully inspect that rainbow warrior and then strike and we got ourselves a tiger this is what we came here for we did nab that tiger we were looking for I uh, didn't get to narry too much for you guys because you know the gentleman was here I did kind of want to talk to him but uh, yeah so we have succeeded at our goal but there is a whole lot of water ahead so let's see if I can prove my point about these fish having something of a bite window um, one more fish on the second pass could be a fluke two or three more I think at that point I'm kind of proving my point so let's see what happens Gonna pull me in the sticks. Oh, oh, got him. He's a jumper. Damn. This fish took the nymph. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna back up from this pool that I hooked him so that, uh, so that, um, 
I don't scare any other fish that might be up there. Or at least I try to minimize that. Ooh, he's fighting still. Fighting still. This could be a tiger. Look how hard it's fighting. This tiger's fighting very hard. Yep, it's a tiger. Yep. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Fighting like mad. Got him. All right. All right. Look at that. And these fish fight like hellions. I mean, they really do. All right, let's let this guy go. All right, guys. <laughs> Tiger number two on our second pass. Not too bad, and that one was definitely bigger than the last one. Put up quite a fight, several jumps in that fish. I'll tell you what, these are all definitely stalker tigers, there's no question about that. And sure, I'm not going to try to pretend as if uh, now that I've brought wild tigers to the net on uh, wild trout streams that a little bit of the magic is gone, but I'm gonna to be totally real with you guys. I still think even stalker tigers are a hell of a good time. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, we got two fish to the net now on this second pass, three fish total. And uh, so far it's looking good for my theory that I just needed to wait until this water warmed up a little bit for these fish to really start, start taking. Now that said, I'm still getting less fish than I, I thought I would have on this second pass, but certainly it's looking better already. took the nymph, whatever it was, I rolled it, and it was gone. Oh, oh my god, it's not, it's still on, it just started going directly towards me. Holy crap, guys, that entire time, the fish was swimming directly towards me, to the point where I literally thought it was, that I lost it on the roll. <laughs> How about that? Just crazy, just crazy that I even kept that fish. <laughs> oh my gosh, so this is a uh, little rainbow, little rainbow. <laughs> the fish that I should not have been allowed to keep. I don't know how much, how well I was narrating while that happened, but you know, I put a cast up there, up into the spot, and uh, the dry fly drowned, set the hook, and I felt a fish roll. And then just nothing. I, I would have sworn that the fish just threw me. <laughs> what happened is as I started to bring the line in to make another cast, I actually saw the fish swim right down beside me. And sure enough, he was still on. <laughs> I managed to keep that fish closing the distance between him 25 feet plus out to me with no tension and he stayed hooked. <laughs> just, just crazy, just crazy. Okay guys. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> just as I started to walk upstream, another fly angler emerged from the parking lot and he's going to beat me up to that big pool up there. So, uh, you know, more power to him. I'm, it's not like I'm mad at him or something, but um, that may very well mean that it's tough to uh, fish that spot too much on the second go around. We should probably greatly limit our opportunity to fish. It is what it is. Got him. Got him. Yeah. Oh, another tiger. Another tiger. Let's see if we can land this fish. Definitely the biggest one of the day too, for sure. Come on, come on, yeah, all right. All right, tiger number three. Just awesome, just awesome. You can see he's got his little piercing there, top of the nose with that uh, wall swarm. Well, there you go guys, tiger number three. And what, that's the, the fourth fish. I think we've gotten three tigers and a rainbow, right? Since we started our second pass here. And, you know, I, I had said that this, I was using a waltz worm. In fact, I forgot I lost my last waltz worm in the last spot. So I'm actually fishing a pheasant tail. You know, we came through this spot during the first pass. They got nothing, got nothing. 
So I, I feel pretty confident in saying that my theory is really holding up in this case, that these fish just have a bite window for whatever reason. And uh, we're having a lot more success this time. You know, like I said, I would be very surprised if the angler that's further up the trail now isn't uh, in that larger pool where I was hoping we were gonna kind of stage our finale. But uh, it is it is what it is. It's not like I own the damn river. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see what he's up to, what he's doing, um, and uh, I guess go from there. Boy, it sounded like a tree was about to fall down. It scared the crap out of me. <laughs> well, guess what, folks? That other angler did not decide to fish this spot. So, that lets us um, continue our experiment to see if we actually get more takes uh, in this pool now than we did earlier this morning. Got one, got one. That was quick. That was awfully quick. Is this gonna be tiger number four? I shouldn't jinx it. It is. It's tiger number four. <laughs> oh God, this is fun. Oh Lord, look at that. Look at that. This fish took the nymph. Tiger number four. Well, there we go, guys. What was that, my first cast out into this pool? We blanketed this pool with casts maybe a little over an hour ago. And then first cast and the second pass, we had a taker. <laughs> Let's see what else we can do. Four tigers. Four tigers right now. Really bombed it out there. Got him. Got him. Yeah. Oh. This fish is putting a little bit of bend in the rod. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Oh, I'm right way above my head because it's coming right at me. I'm gonna guess it's a bow. It's putting up a prolonged fight. This could be a fifth tiger. It is a fifth tiger. A fifth. Oh my gosh. Insane. Of course, I don't have them in yet. to the bed. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is fun as hell. You know, like I said, yeah, these are stocker tigers for sure. These are stocked fish. In a lot of ways, you know, being stocked fish, catching them is no harder than catching any other stocked fish, any other rainbow or brown that's stocked. But uh, they're novelty fish, and I personally think they're a lot of fun. Now, the amount that I'm catching here is not really dependent on any special thing that I'm doing. I'm fishing for these fish no different than I would fish for uh, rainbows or browns or stocked rookies or any other stocked fish. Well, I mean, it's just a function of the ratio that they stocked, and they must have put a ton of tigers in here uh, because that's why we're catching so many of them. <laughs> He took the dry fly. Took the dry fly. Oh. That's another fish that's putting some bend in the rod. <laughs> love it. Gotta love it. And it's another tiger. Tiger number six. Tiger number six. Just preposterous. Just preposterous. <gasps> and I lost him. He threw me. Oh. I guess we don't count that as tiger number six. I guess if we're counting LDRs, we do. But, uh, damn. <laughs> oh, Bo! 
buddy, you dropped your ball. Okay. 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 All right, folks. I'm kind of nearing the end of the uh, amount of time I have to spend here in the stream. But I do have a little bit of extra time left. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go right back to the start again. We're going to start a third pass. Now, we're not going to go all the way up. Uh, a third time, like I just did for the second for the second pass. But I'm gonna start on a third pass, and we're gonna see if we get more fish on a third pass uh, after I fished and waded through so much of this water. I mean, look, guys, these are stockers we're talking about. <laughs> Should we try something zany and green weed? I'm skeptical, but let's give it a go. Got him, got him. Ooh, it's a littler fish. This time a brown, which is kind of cool. It's a pseudo trifecta of sorts, I guess. All right, guys, I know I said that was gonna be our last spot, but when we actually got one of these finicky fish to take the green weenie, I thought, well, let's see if any of these other fish that were ignoring my flies earlier will take the green weenie. He's gonna take, yep, got him. I saw that fish, he, he followed it downstream, examining, examining, examining. And then he finally took. Well guys, <laughs> if that's not success, I don't know what is. <clears throat> I set out today with this seemingly unrealistic goal of trying to <laughs> catch more tigers uh, on video than I have ever managed to catch in one outing on a video before. And I succeeded at that goal, five tigers to the net. And we were very, very close to having a sixth if it hadn't thrown me. Not to mention several rainbows, a couple browns, a great outing out here today. And isn't it interesting that it, it played out really a, a lot like I thought it would, which is to say, uh, <laughs> that first pass, we really saw very little activity and it was almost kind of discouraging. Um, and yet, after spending, I don't know, I'd say about an hour fishing our way up, went all the way back downstream, made a second pass, and it was like, it was fishing like a whole different stream, right? And that's just how it goes sometimes, um, especially when it starts to get cold overnight. You know, these fish, they might have kind of a bite window. Now, that kind of begs another question, which is, why a bite window? Well, I mean, there could be a number of reasons that there would be a bite window. For one thing, uh, it could be thermal. It could be that, you know, with the cold snaps we've had overnight, these fish just kind of need a little time for the water to warm up so they can warm up themselves. After all, they are cold-blooded. Uh, and so they don't start feeding until uh, closer towards midday. But it could just as easily be a, a function of forage. You know, if there's not a lot of forage in the stream in the earlier hours when it's colder and uh, some of those uh, forage insects start to come out a little bit more once the water warms up during midday, well, that's also when the fish are, gonna, are going to start um, becoming a little more interested in feeding. <laughs> You know, sometimes you just have a wild outing, and this was one of those wild outings. Five tigers to the net. I love it, guys. And I guess we're going to wrap it up here. So, if you did enjoy watching, please do hit that thumbs up button. It helps out the channel by letting other people know this is a video they might want to see. And uh, if you like what I'm doing out here, subscribe to see more. I will catch you guys next time.